Hey guys, okay, so this is part two, uh, part one, I'll put a link down below so you guys can click it, just kind of giving you a quick tour of the uh, tra travel trailer that we bought. Uh, this part is going to be things we wish we would have known before we bought this thing. Um, we'd never, I'd never even spent a night in a travel trailer before buying this, so it's been a bit of a learning curve. The first one is um, none of the accessories come with it. You don't get a sewer hose, you don't get an extension cord. Power, surge protector, water hose, power, pressure regulator, any of that stuff. Thankfully, the dealership we bought it from, uh, they gave us a $500 credit to their parts department, which we promptly used. Was it 100? 100. I thought it was more than that. Oh, well. We spent a whole bunch of money there. Um, thankfully, um, we've always been fascinated with tiny houses, so we often were would check out the tiny house kind of uh, show homes they have at Ikea. So pretty much everything you're gonna see furniture wise and accessory wise we've bought from Ikea. Um, I will put a list down below of like the essential items that you're going to need to buy pretty much the day you pick one of these things up. Um, but I'll have that uh, list down below. So the first thing is there was nowhere to put our shoes. So we bought these little tubs from Ikea. They are a shoe rack. Crystal's purse at the moment. Um, they fit perfectly there. They're not very big. We didn't secure them with screws just because we don't like putting holes in things we just bought. So everything is command hooked in place. That's those little tabs you can see kind of right there. Um, definitely a lot of help. Like there is storage under the bed for shoes, but we currently have that is storage for our dog food and dog bowls and stuff. So and it's a bit of a pain to open and close where this is right there when you walk in the door you just pop your shoes off put it in the little tub and you're good to go same thing the tubs pop out so you can take them and clean them it's all plastic and we actually found a little kind of bob ross happy accident the tub on top is perfect for putting leashes and keys okay so apparently part two is being done by the wife I was not informed of this until probably about 30 seconds ago, but we're going to be going over the stove. So the stove is actually really, really good for the size that it is. You only get two elements. Uh, there is no oven here. Um, but the upside is, is you do get a full hood vent with all of the lovely warning labels intact. It does have a light. It has a fan. Uh, you have to open the fan from the outside of the trailer, otherwise it's not going to vent to anywhere, which means that whenever you're cooking something delicious, everybody else outside gets to smell it, and then you're kind of those jerks. Um, so the one thing we didn't know when we were doing this is you'll notice that it has off, high, and light, and obviously left and right for whichever burner you're using. Excuse the dog hair, we have a lot of pets. Um... So you would think that turning it to light would, you know, spark it, get it to light. That would be a lie. There is no such thing. There is no sparker anywhere in here. So thankfully, we had actually bought a barbecue lighter to light uh, citronella coils and fires for outside. So we were actually able to cook in here on the first night but if we hadn't had one, there's no way that we would have been able to cook. So at first we thought maybe the sparkers were just, you know, faulty. And then we kind of looked at it a little closer and realized there wasn't one. But uh, besides that, it works really, really well. There's a good high to low range. And um, it doesn't have a lot of excess propane that it doesn't burn. So you're not getting that propane smell in the uh, camper. Which is a great thing considering... There's a lovely little carbon monoxide detector right there that screeches like a banshee if it smells anything. So, uh, yeah, that is the oven. All right, so another another modification that we had to do was this trailer doesn't have any drawers. So we bought this. It's actually a three-wire mesh shelf with drawers we had to cut to fit. But that way we can, you know, put away all of our cutlery and all of that. Otherwise, it was taking up a lot of counter space. Uh, all the stuff that we kind of show here, I'll put a link in the uh, description down below. Uh, another one from the tiny home stuff was we combined a dish rack with a utensil holder to make a smaller waterproof dish rack. 
the fridge. A couple things we did not know going into this. First, this fridge can take up to 12 hours to get cold. We went out, I don't know really, I don't know what we were expecting. We were expecting maybe a few hours. We went out with coolers. We basically couldn't use a fridge for the first day. So this is our second trip out. We were like, okay, hey, the day before we'll fire it up on propane. Uh, I had to go to the manual for the fridge because when you fire it up on propane, you actually have to push the spark as fast as you can for five seconds to get it to light. Thankfully, we let it run for, I'd say, about 12 hours before we left, and the fridge was nice and cold before we got there. One trick that a lot of people say they use is they'll, like, freeze bottles of salt water um, to pre-cool the fridge a bit. Uh, we Thankfully, it, like I said, it got cold enough uh, just running it on propane. I think the only thing that we've added that wasn't from Ikea was this paper towel holder. It was in the RV section at Canadian Tire. It comes with a little slide mount, but it wasn't going to work for what we wanted, so we ended up just command hooking it. See the little strips? To the, uh, the shelf. The command hook seemed to be holding up quite well. We've already driven over 100 kilometers with all of this stuff command hooked in place. So uh, they're definitely surprising me with their ability to hang on. One more thing that I forgot is the uh, the storage compartments on these things. Uh, from what we were told at the, at the dealership, they're basically all keyed the same. So we've actually rekeyed ours. Um, that way people don't have keys to where we store things. But that's definitely one thing to keep in mind. Uh, Amazon has lock sets for a reasonable, for a reasonable price. So final little things. Um, one is don't turn off the water pump in the middle of the night without telling other people she's giving me a dirty look right now Don't i dare turn that camera around I won't hurt you. <laughs> um i turned off water pump trying to conserve electricity even though we were on shore power and crystal had to use the washroom in, in the middle of the night i didn't say anything so she thought the toilet was broken i just turned off the water pump so if you're gonna do that it's on shore power i guess it doesn't really make much sense but um Make sure other people in the tra everyone else in the trailer knows that the water pump's off, so there's no panic. <laughs> uh, lastly, being a big guy, uh, I had a lot of fears about getting a travel trailer, about breaking things with my weight or things bending, not being able to support me. Um, I'm actually currently sitting on the dinette table, which is folded up into bed mode. There's a little bit of flex, but nothing crazy. Um, I'm able to kneel on the bed, no problem to crawl over to get into the cabinets, uh, use the washroom, no problem. The step getting in was one of my big concerns. Again, it, it, it's obvious like it bends a little bit with me on there, but it seems to be holding my weight fine. And like I'm 400 pounds. So there's a lot of squishing through doors because I am a uh, very large man. These doors are built for somebody my wife's size. But um, I would say definitely um, don't be so worried about your size when it comes to travel trailers i don't like speaking from my own experience being 400 pounds and now spent five nights like five nights ish in the travel trailer um i've gotten very comfortable with like if i have to get into these cabinets above my head i have no problem just you know crawling across the uh the rear dinette bed to get in there um no problems um using the washroom at all uh, getting in and out of the trailer, a little bit of a squeeze through the door, but it's not a big deal. Um, I know it was something that definitely held me back from wanting to commit to the idea for a long time. We actually ended up looking at this trailer while we were getting ready to haul our friend's trailer up to their seasonal because the trailer exceeded the weight rating of their pickup. So I was, we weren't even intending on buying one that day. We looked at it, we fell in love with it, the price was right, and a ton and of other people... Else trying to buy it <laughs> a ton of other people were looking at it and the second we heard another couple being saying that they want to put a deposit on it uh crystal made a run for the inside to put the deposit and secure it we love it um we're going to be using it a lot you guys will probably see it quite often in a lot of videos especially as we start traveling farther and farther away from manitoba once that is something that's feasible again um yeah, that's all I got. So if you guys like this video, make sure you uh, hit subscribe, ring the bell to so get notifications. And when, so you'll know when I upload new videos. This is really weird having somebody watch me film. It's something that I'm actually really self-conscious about. <laughs> um, 
no, but like drop a comment down below if you guys want, if you guys have any specific questions about the trailer and I can show you kind of more close up things and how stuff, different things operate. Uh, I did forget to mention in my last video, it does have a furnace so we can camp later into the year, which is pretty awesome. Um, and as always guys, thank you all so much for watching.